And welcome to GMTV Show 139. Can that be right? I don't know. Hey, Jam TV audience, show 139. I was skiing today. I'm beat. And here's Bill Norman. How's there that for go. a show open? <laughs> there you go. You went skiing, huh? How's it? Is there snow? A lot of snow? Yeah, a little tiny bit. Like My ski area is like, they don't make it to the end of March ever. They're in northern New Jersey and, you know, they're, they're doing their best. I don't know but, if you, uh, I don't know if you happen to see, I posted a couple of clips of my son skiing in Utah. Oh, Yeah. It's like frigging insane. I mean, yeah, you know, it's like four feet of powder on top of ten feet of everything else. We have the exact opposite of that. I mean, like, you know, I I did my best to avoid the rocks and uh, today, but it was it was very rough. You know, very, <laughs> not much snow. But you know, it's going to snow this weekend, and there's going to be more more cold days next week. So maybe they're going to keep it going. I don't know. Is that what they're saying? It's supposed to snow this weekend? It's supposed to. Yeah, there's a winter storm advisory, at least for me out here in PA. So we're going to get. We're going to get uh, our share of snow tomorrow night. So how's everything? Yeah, good. You know, nothing uh, nothing to report. Nobody seems to have passed away this week, which is great. You know, and, that's good. You know, What's the, your hat? What's on your hat? A star? Uh, that's It's Block Island, actually. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's Block Island. Looks, it looks vaguely communist, which I like. You know? It kind of does. It's like an inverted communist thing going on. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of an inverted communist. There you go. You there know. you go. So what are you do for us? Play some comedy music for us. Yeah, so I, I thought I thought I would play uh, songs, you know, because uh, Wednesday was what? International Woman Day. So I, I thought I would do. I, I, uh, I'm silly enough to play a lot of songs by woman artists because they're like some of my favorite artists. And so I, I guess I'll do I'll do that. And I'm going to start with a little song by Tammy Wynette. You've heard it before, but but you've heard it before. Just follow the stairway to this lonely world of mine. You'll find me waiting there in apartment number nine. Not so very long ago You walked away from me After all these plans we made You decided to be free Loneliness surrounds me without your arms around me and the sun will never shine in apartment number nine I keep waiting in this lonely room just in case you change your mind You'll find me waiting there In apartment number nine Loneliness surrounds me Without your arms around me And the sun will never shine In apartment number nine No, the sun will never shine in apartment number nine <laughs> Very 
nice, very nice. Thank you, thank you. So I was watching um, the interweb the other day, and and uh, the international interweb. Morgan Freeman comes on, right? Like old Morgan Freeman, right? I, I love, I love that guy, right? And he comes on and he says he's being interviewed. It was probably a few years ago, but the clip came on the other day, and he. He said uh, the the interviewer was on sixty minutes. He was being interviewed on sixty minutes, and and he said uh, he said, "So you must be very proud that uh, Black History Month is February." And he says, "That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard." <laughs> and the, and the, I don't think they were expecting him to say that. Like there wasn't a setup, you know, like yeah, this, yeah. this show. They didn't like you don't plan what you're going to say. And he, he said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. He says, Black History Month is ridiculous. He said, Black people were part of American history. So every month is Black History Month. It's American History Month, including Black people. And that's kind of the way I feel about Woman's Day, which, oh, they get a day. Wow, women get a day. Fantastic. And then, like, Women's History Month is March. So it's like, okay, men, white men history, white men history month is every month except february and march i don't you know women have so much to do with the world everybody has a mother you might not have a father but everybody has a mother and they well, get i think, I think you have a father i think you have a father too he may not be in your home but you have a father also <laughs> yeah right you might not know who he is you know no but you know i mean to me you know you're right and and sometimes i also i also think it's funny when people you know put put what you're saying out there saying hey man every day is when you know it's like yeah, whatever. Chocolate cookie, cookie day. Chocolate cho hug a nurse day. Every day is hug a nurse day. Come on. If if you're within the limits of your, you know, of the with the restraining order, yes, exactly. I think <laughs> I think Miss Coughlin can attest to that. You there know? you go. <laughs> but the but I mean, you know, to me it's like like frisbee day or whatever. You know, like there's there's a day there's a day for almost everything. And to me, I choose more to look at it like it's just sort of like. Yeah, every day is Women's Day. I mean, absolutely, there's no question about that. That being, you know, that being said, you know, at least it's not like a Hallmark day. You know, it's not like it's not a retail thing. I don't you have know? to buy a card. Well, I mean, you know, it's you could you could take you could extrapolate that and say, like, you know, every day is Romance Day, not just Valentine's Day. That's you know? right. But you know what? Every day is not Christmas. Thank God. Every every day is not Christmas. <laughs> and every day is not Valentine's Day either. Believe me. That's you know. Yeah, believe me. <laughs> they should just have, you know, two years before the mass day or so now do a love day. song for Valentine's Day, which is today, and do a Christmas song for Christmas, which is today. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I think uh, I get segueing into another into another place. I do, I do want to plug, I do want to plug the the gig at at the Horseshoe this Monday night. Tell me um, about that. Uh, it, it's Crispin, it's Crispin and friends. You know, Crispin CEO and friends. You know, we haven't played there because of the pandemic we haven't played there in over three years which is it, but insane wait didn't you play there like two weeks ago or a month ago or what, what I was played, that you know I, I played there in in Christmas you know there, there's stuff that I I play there whenever I can and I play there sometimes in other configurations but you haven't done it with Crispin so, no and, so and you know the beauty of of this time around is is my buddy Eddie Wright has been available for rehearsals and stuff and he's going to wow. play and he hasn't played he definitely hasn't played in three years with us. I mean, wow. I, I did I did a show there that Crispin was supposed to be on, and then he bagged at the last minute, and so it was just me and Tiger and, and Scott Spray. And that was fun, it was just, but it was different, you know. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I've played the Christmas thing, which I do every year, you know, I did all that stuff. Right. But this thing, you know, we are, we are like uh, rehearsing in earnest for this, you know. We're like, we're, we're very... Uh, I think we are um, appreciative of the moment in time that, you know, as we've all learned, you don't know how these moments in time, how often they'll come along, you know? So it's just been such a joy really to play with Eddie, particular, you know, in the rehearsal situation, because we just, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's really cavalier for people to say like, you know, well, yeah, he's up in Maine, but why don't you just get another singing bass player? They're singing bass players. It's like, yeah, you know, they're singing bass players, but not that I've been with since seventh grade. You yeah, know, right. and and it's like there's just stuff there 
you know, I'm pretty good on my feet musically. You are, you know, there's a lot of people that can sort of just take it as it comes and you just do that. But there's something different than something that's just like imprinted in your DNA, which is, you know, it's, it's a different thing. And uh, I'm just, I'm enjoying it so much. And, and the hilarious thing is that, uh, you know, we're doing some material, we're doing some material, you know, I, I was sort of jokingly calling it our greatest hits, you know, so we're doing some stuff that we have done before, which seemed like the best way to go, given that we hadn't played together in like three years, but it's not, it doesn't mean it's like off the rack. It just means it's, it's, you know, interesting stuff. But the funny thing is we're, we're discovering all sorts of nuances that we haven't been playing all sorts of things, you know, like, and in some cases it's like, you know, it's a, it's a coloring on a chord that you're sort of sitting there and you go like, how the fuck did I miss that? The first five years I played 10 years, I played like whatever, you know, like, you know, and it's I, kind I of know fun. Just what you mean. I, I was playing, I've said this on the show before. I, I was playing with a band and that was a, a horn band, what it is. And the drummer, Bob Bonvini is a great, great guy. And imagine getting music direction from a drummer, you know, like, so, <laughs> so, we're working on Peg, right, by Steely oh, Dan, yeah, okay. and, and I'm playing the Rose Electric piano part, whatever I'm doing, and Fred Clark is rocking on the on the guitar part. Exactly. And, and, and he says to me, he leans over because he doesn't want to call me out in front of everybody, <laughs> right? I'm sitting kind of next to him, and he leans over like there's a little break, a pretty serious rehearsal, like we're, pan we're hammering through songs. And he says, uh, let's see, what did he say? He said, uh, are you playing... The dominant seven or the on the top or on the bottom mm. and, I, and i went i don't understand the question then i went wait wait music theory wait so the dominant seven we're in this key so the dominant seven is this note and i'm playing it he means with my pinky i'm playing it with my pinky and he goes you're supposed to play it on the bottom and i so go dominant is a dominant seventh is that like if you're in an e it's d is that the dominant seventh yeah right Right. Yeah, and okay. so I was playing it with my pinky and I was supposed to play it on the bottom with my thumb. And so I went, I went like this. I went, oh, there's the chord and there's the dominant seven. And I played it with my thumb and he went, and I went, Oh my God, you're right. Like, <laughs> how did you hear that? And he's like, mm, you know, I don't know. It sounded like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. it was a little funny. It was, I was like, I've played it for my whole life with the other, in, with the other inversion. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, you know, inversions are like such a big deal, you know. Yeah. It's, it's like it, and you know, particularly you know when you're when you're playing solo too. It's it's like you know, if you're trying to emulate something, inversions are are like your best friend. But you know, not not always easy to just grab them, you know, and go. You know, like if you're if you're Tommy Emmanuel, yes, you can do all that. But you exactly. Know. But you know, you get criticized by a drummer. Come on, you know. Not that drummer. He'll never criticize. He's supportive. He's a man that supports. You know. Actually, I am. Hello, guys. Hey, how are you, David? I'm fine, thank you. Um, I'm laughing here to myself because the last time we all got together, we were talking about things like this. What's that? <laughs> this is candy. It's yeah. candy. What about sweet oh, water? Sweet water. What did you Remember, get? Uh, you, I, you I get? got two. I got, well, I got a few things, but I got two bags. I know. Can, I, uh, separate separate purchases, but I can't believe it. It's the first time I've ever gotten candy, Ed. No way. So this is the first time you ever gotten candy from Sweetwater. Yes. Oh, I've wow. ordered things from. I've gotten things from them before, but I've never gotten candy. That's why when you guys were talking about it. I was going, hmm, hmm, interesting. That's funny. Let's, you know, if you, let's, if let's, you, if you like said to them, these friends of mine were talking about the thing and they said they always got candy. If you, if you like somehow got that to your, your sales representative guy, you'd probably get a box of candy or something. Absolutely. Sweet yeah. water. So it's sweet funny. Water. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. That's pretty good. Well, how's it going out in California? How's your weather? Are you snowed in? Well, okay. No, I am not. Like I told you, I'm in a sweet spot. But I feel bad for the people up on the hill, you know, up in the mountains. They're okay. They're it's fine. bad, guys. It's ugly. What, like their power is out and they can't get in and out of their houses? And we're, uh, Yeah, we're talking about all of the above. Um, they're uh, actually, uh, their houses are covered up. They can't get in or out. So a lot of people are trapped. 12 people died. No way. Uh, oh, yeah. Really? Way, way. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's We got... 
volunteers. Speaking of uh, Utah, a couple mm. of brothers from Utah came out to help get some of these folks out. Wow, what they brought wow. their snowmobiles yeah. or something or their yeah 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 they brought their they brought their shit man. They well, they know they shit. know about snow in Utah. That's for sure. Yes. Wow. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. My son used to work for the uh, the avalanche. Uh, oh. I, I forget what the avalanche prevention or something in in Utah, and uh, he never got to fire the cannon, but he would he would be on the crew where they fired the cannon, and and you know right. okay. they created avalanches and you know slides because right. it, would, it was better than letting. Wow, that's else really cool. In. Yeah, my family was instrumental in in using artillery to uh, to to knock avalanches down in Austria, in yeah. in Vodkastein, Austria for years. For like I don't know, I remember them doing it when I was a kid. And, and they also built cable cars that carry explosives up into the mountains, and then they drop them off the cable car. Wow. Yeah, wow. pretty wild. But anyway, so I'm sorry to hear that about L.A., but you're in sunny L.A., and it's 70 degrees today, and they're all suffering about 30 miles away. Well, right, right, right now it's it's 61 degrees. Yeah, what did I, I woke up to woke up to 46 degrees, right? And our high was 68, so right now it's 61. Right. The and horror. The horror. <laughs> but, but, you know, we got uh, what you guys were talking about early just a few minutes ago. Uh, we will be getting that storm. Uh, we're going to get hit with rain. And when that rain hits that snow, you know it's going to be ugly, guys, for them up there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, you know, the it's, rain, you know, like, it, it's just out west, it's always like rain, dry, then rain. And right. what I mean is like mudslides. And, and right. Mudslides exactly. And floods and, you know, when. Even, you know, when I went out, I went out to visit my son and we went down to Bryce and Zion, you know, just right. on a little vacation, you know, and, you know, you, you go to the canyons there and, you know, like two weeks before we got there, like three tourists had died in a flash flood. You know, there was. Like yeah, a well, let me tell you something. I was at Zion last year on my motorcycle trip last, last summer, no, summer before last. Yep. And I was at Bryce, and I'm swimming in the rivers there. You know, you, there's the river that goes up the canyon yep. and different yep. levels. It's beautiful. And, and so I'm swimming in the river, different watering holes. People are like, oh, look at that guy swimming in the watering hole, right? So I get out of the watering hole. I go down back to where I started, and there's a giant sign that says, no swimming, toxic algae blooms are happening right now. Like, you'll die. And, uh, and flash flood warning. And three days later... The entire canyon got wiped out. And the park got closed. Wow. Wow. And where, where I had my motorcycle parked, there were like motorhomes getting washed across the parking lot. So, yeah, no, it's it's legit when when that stuff happens. And, and, you know, you think about it, you're like at altitude there and you sort of think like, well, you know, you're so high up that, you know, last thing's going to happen is you're going to get flooded. You know, it's like yep. that, you know, that white stuff like has. Something Mother to do Nature, with the wild, wild west, and that's why I love the West because Mother Nature's in charge. I, you know, I used to. What I really liked the most about, you know, when I live in Colorado, I, I wasn't a skier, which was weird, but I, I just wasn't. But I, I was a little bit of a climber, you know, and nothing heavy technical, but I would climb, and I would get to places where, and I, I do a lot of solo stuff, so I get to places where, you know, I'm literally, I'm just down to my boots, you know, because. The wind just feels good wherever the hell I am, you know, and you're just standing on the top of this thing and and you've got, you know, pine trees and aspen trees and and little eddy pools that were made out of erosion that have tiny little bleached rodent bones in them from birds of prey and stuff. And you're just sitting there and you're just going like, you know, I'm just a little grain of sand in this whole freaking yeah, place. Right. And it, it's what I like about the ocean, too, you know, like the ocean or that kind of space you know i just right. love i love putting man in his rightful place as just a little grain of sand and you know you can either respect and love all this stuff or you can be mm -hmm. frustrated that somehow the world isn't spinning around you but you know the rock my takeaway from that whole thing was little tiny rodent bones is a great name for a band 
<laughs> well, I thought I thought uh, Algae lo Lotus Blooms. I thought that was a good name for the band. Whatever. <laughs> That's a good name. All right, Bill Norman, play a song. Let's let's. Okay, uh, this is kind of you know again keeping with the keeping with the idea of you know women things and and sort of it's this has a little bit of an environmental twist to it too. You know. <laughs> Starting again. Pay paradise, put on parking. Fuck me, I've completely pushed it. Holy shit. Do it, man. <laughs> What I is love happening it. here? Oh my it's god! All right, it's, like it's all right, man. It's all right, Bill. It's all crazy, man. It's all crazy. good, that, man. That is Bill Nolman's tribute to women for Women's Day. Yeah, good job, hey, well hey, Bill. 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 Just, uh, you know. Bill. Bill Joni says hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take two. Take two. <laughs> Yeah, this has been the strangest technical night. I, I didn't get I, I didn't get the green memo. I'm the only one who didn't get the green memo, so I'm trying to change my colors here, but it's not working. But sorry, I you know I got Nobody last week's memo. To figure out the song, you know. <laughs> you know I'm gonna I'm gonna have to, you know, I can't. It starts but... on the four, in case you're wondering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the music is insane. It starts on the it's four. Right. Whatever key it's in, it starts on the four. Yeah, the problem is I'm in a tuning. That's the. Ooh, he's in a special what does tuning. That mean? You're in a tuning. He's in a Norman tuning. It's I mean, I mean like this. Uh, I mean like this. You know, you know like uh, if I take the. Uh, that's right. There you go. <laughs> that, that's right. I mean, Play that, that, baby. Yeah, love it. Can't go wrong with that. Four and twenty years ago, I come into this life. Son of a woman and a man go out in strife. We were going to be alone. And it wasn't any good at the I am like a disaster. Taking you away. Different kind of poverty now upsets me so. Night after sleepless night, I wonder where did she go? Why am I so alone? Is she coming soon and she's going home? Have they taken her away? Morning comes to summer and I go to my bed. Night after sleepless night, I wonder where did she go? Why am I so inept? Where has she gone now? Will I ever know? I'm embarrassed as can be, and I really blow. That's editorial. Good God. You know, like, like, like playing, playing guitar as a, you know, for the first time, which is awesome, you know, like, Capo, capo. Yeah. Right. Who are those two? Those who were the two guys who used to review uh, movies and they give? I give it Siskel two thumbs and Ebert. up. Right? Yeah, Cisco and oh, Ebert. Right. That was it. It's like I got Bill. I give that two thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, I got two thumbs up my ass right now. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh man! Like, oh my God! It's all good, Bill. 
Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to like I'm going to mute <laughs> I'm going to mute myself, oh, I'm gonna mute myself oh. at some point and <laughs> figure this out why you guys are doing I thought something. You say, I'm right. going to mute Yeah. <laughs> <Mute time. laughs> no. I'm going to mute my I'm going to mute myself and have like a temper tantrum. <laughs> so what's happening, Will Bear? What's going on with you? I'm sitting there waiting, right? You know, there's the way for the people who, you know, for the people at home, you know, we sit here, right? And, and, and you know, Ed comes on. He says, okay, guys, so we're going to, we're going to start in a minute. I'll get you wait here. And then we see this green screen thing, right? And, you know, we sit there like waiting for him to suddenly come on and then we're live. And it's like, whoa, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And I'm waiting, and suddenly this thing pops up. This is your internet connection has stopped. There you go. Oh. And I'm like, well, how could he have done that? What? How? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, and thus no, that, the traveling began. Yes, and so you know, thus the the trip began. You know, calling the, you know, the security office to find out are people complaining about it. And actually, there are ten apartments that don't have service. So there you go. Uh, you know, well, very glad strange. you made the show, and you look good. You uh, know. Thank you. I, well, I'm very red. I'm I'm feeling very red. I my final message, my final text message to to uh, to uh, to Ed was, um, Captain Mr. Spock here. My detectors indicate I am completely fucked. <laughs> God. Oh my God. God. All right. Then, so, uh, can you just copy paste that so I can use that as well? <laughs> <laughs> well I'll send it to you. Sure. I actually, I actually figured it out. I know, I know what my problem was, but that's that's my problem. <laughs> very good. So, by the way, Bill, I'm going to come on Monday. I'm going to be in town on Monday. So I'm going to, I'm going to come to your show. Oh, please do. That, It'll be good. And, and again, you know, this is this is the the show that you know the only people who have a legit excuse. You know, to not come are people who watch Jeopardy, and and I will never hold that against them. You know, oh, if they would okay. rather watch Jeopardy, I, you know, that I will not. I will never harsh anyone for Can that. Can we put it on the TV at the bar over your heads while you're playing? So that like, <laughs> we'll like, a, we'll we'll like a, Jeopardy, we'll be like, yeah, yeah like, yelling uh, answers out. Yeah, while you're playing. The gig is, the gig yeah. is, you know, it's one set, one hour, like from seven to eight. You know, right. And then the open mic is afterwards, but you know, it's like, it's, and I, I talk to people and I go like, yeah, we're seven, eight. And they're like, Oh geez. You know, seven is pushing it. I thought maybe like seven would be safe, but I guess not. You know. <laughs> Speaking about but pushing it. Hey, hey, so. hey. There he is. <laughs> and we got Loretta in the studio. Oh, hey, wow. Wow. Yeah. That I will not. We got a good and we got Dennis coming on. Uh, Dennis did a uh, music video for a for a young artist, and we're going to have that on the show. Very cool. Can I can I just do that fucking thing just so I won't die of shame? Can I just? <laughs> what, do you, what are you going to do? <laughs> yes. Their dice put up a parking lot. Yeah, pink hotel booty can a swing in hot spot. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got to lose? In paradise, put up a park. They took all the trees, put them in a tree museum. And they pay the people a dollar and a half just to see. Don't it always seem to go? Don't know what you got to do. Be paradise, put up a party. Hey, farmer, farmer, put away the DTT. Give me spots on my apple, believe me, the birds and the bees. Don't it always seem to go? Because you don't know what you got to do. It's gone. Be paradise, put up a parking lot. Late last night, I heard the screen door slam. And a big yellow taxi took away my walk. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got to do? It's gone. In paradise, put up a parking lot. You pay paradise, put up a parking lot. You pay paradise, put up a parking lot.
Yeah. Yeah. yeah very nice. Very All nice. Right. That would have tortured me for the whole. <laughs> awesome recovery. Yeah. Now yeah, it's. You took the capo it's, off. Was that it? You finally got your right. capo where it needs to be? No, it was. It, the capo works fine. You know. <laughs> the brain o. The capo on the brain o. <laughs> but Bill. The brain o. Bill. Yes. What? How are you, man? Good, Randy. How's it Good. going? Yeah, well, I have to tell you, I was listening before, and I'm not kidding. When you were gearing up for the first failed attempt, um, <laughs> which happens to me every gig I fucking play, please. Yes. Um, I swear to God, you you were you were gearing up. I got the rhythm of the guitar, and I thought your first line was going to be the way I see it. He said, um, I, it, "It was Joni." But yeah, it was yeah, a different yeah. Joni song. He cracked me up when you started to do that other song. It just, you had that Joni thing going on, but I just heard another song, a Joni song in my head. She, That's she, right. You're not the only one. Helen was listening to the show and she said, Joni? Right. <laughs> right. I thought it was going to be Free Man, Free Man in Paris. I thought he was doing Free Man in Paris. Mm. We did that one. Huh? Did riveting, with, um, riveting television, everybody. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we did a show in We're Waiting where we did Free Man in Paris. It was, you know, it was I, I used to do these shows there. I did it for four years in a row. And, uh, you know, we'd have like 19 people, you know, and, and our band would just be, we would be the, the core band, which meant you didn't have all that stupid setup and that kind of crap, right. you know, it was basically. <laughs> and that. we would bring people up and, you know, generally it was mostly, you know, vocalists, but, but, um, you know, we had the the core band was Fonda Fine Go, myself, Mike Marble, um, and Eddie Wright. You know, like it was just the four of us basically, and Crispin. You know, except in this particular case, it was Jim Clark. And so we we did Free Man in Paris, and uh, it was so good. Like Fonda sang it, and and uh, you know, Jimmy Clark's a really good horn player. I don't know if you've ever played with him, but he is he's really exceptional, and he's. He works hard and he gets all the little nuanced shit that you really want. Right, you know, yeah, right. We did we did it that show. We did Wichita lineman and he brought the flugel oh. horn, you know. Oh. Like, mm -hmm. Wow. Oh my god. I mean, it's always that's the high and lonesome sound. Flugel horn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the high and lonesome huge flugel horn sound. I love that. Uh, who cares? All right, so here's what's gonna happen on the show tonight. We're gonna move the show along a little bit because uh, at eight thirty we're gonna do a world premiere video that's twenty five minutes from now, roughly, give or take. Uh, we're going to do a world premiere video uh, de that uh, Dennis already edited <laughs> together, and we're bringing in... Uh, no, this is not one of those. This is not, like, the the uh, COVID music video craziness. This no, is I've corresponded with Dennis recently. He's quite impressive what he can do. Yeah, he's doing some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we Very have cool. uh, we have the uh, the young lady that wrote the song and, uh, and performed it, and we have Dennis's video, which I saw, and I was like... Wow, like I, I've seen it. I was watching it in my car coming back from. Yeah, I don't know this. Okay, pretty good. So uh, that's going to happen at eight thirty. So we're going to and Will Baird, his apartment like is exploding at eight thirty. So yes. he's got to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get him out, off. So we're going to do a couple songs with Bill Nolman, a couple songs with Will Baird, and we'll, we'll yuck it up after the music mm -hmm. video. And that's fine. And I have I have to bail early because I have to rehearse mm -hmm. for a gig tomorrow night. That where's that? What be are you doing? I might be better prepared for. <laughs> what do you do? What are you doing? I'm with an original band called Happy Ending at Best Video in Hamden. As fun, it's great, but I could I could use another run through. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go off and do that. There you go. All right. Well, good. We're good. glad you can make it to Jam I, the I, early I, part of Jam I Always love walking into the room here. It exactly. sounds like the house we'll band for a strip club. Later and you know, and, uh, we got a whole show plan. So. Yeah, the room mm. smells like whiskey and weed, and yeah, it's oh. great. <laughs> love that. <laughs> I could add one more thing, but I won't. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Let your imaginations run wild, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, you guys have dirty minds. <laughs> All right, go for it, Bill Nolman. What do you got? Well, we're trying to be tuned. Let me just spend half the time tuning and half the time plugging out a tune. This is like this is like the old days of music when when you know bands. I have this I have this video of uh, Jethro Tull playing at at like. Glastonbury or one of the you know one of these big Brit you know music festivals and and uh freaking <laughs> freaking Ian Anderson has to like you know just sort of shoot the shit while the bass player is literally doing like you know and he forgot his tuner his because he, well, tuner. He, he, there is no such thing as a tuner in 1970 you know like he's got his tuning player. fork he's like Boom. right fucking bass, fucking bass player man 
You know, I, I just think, you know, for, for now I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to go to like a, a Tom Waits song because I know that somebody out here is a big fan. I forgot who. <laughs> this is for a special little boy. <laughs> for a special little kid out there who just loves Tom Hanks. I mean, Tom Waits. <laughs> Well, I'm leaving my family, leaving all my friends. My body's at home, my heart's in the wind. The clouds are like headlines on a new front page sky. My tears are salt water, the moon's full and high. And I know Martin Eden is going to be proud of me. And many before me been called to the sea. Be up in the crow's nest singing my say. Shiver me timbers sailing away. And the far cliffed in the sand shifted, I'm drifting on out. Oh, Captain Ahab, got nothing on me. Fall away, don't follow me, I'm traveling alone. The water's my daughter, gonna skip like a stone. So please call my missus, tell her not to cry now. My goodbye is written by the moon in the sky. Nobody knows me, can't fathom my stay. Shiver me timbers, I'm going away. And the fog's lifting, the sand's shifting, I'm drifting on out. Oh, Captain Ahab, got nothing on me, so follow me, don't swallow me, I'm traveling alone. Blue waters, my daughter, gonna skip like a stone. I'm leaving my family, leaving all my friends. My body's at home, my heart's in the wind. Where clouds are like headlines in a new front page sky. Shiver me timbers, I'm sailing away. Very nice. Very, very nice. Wow. Yeah. Very I hate nice. You know, people. Hell yeah. Thank you. Beautiful Thank you. song. Nice. Great song. Nicely done. Nicely done. <laughs> and now the Tom Waits version for it. <laughs> <laughs> You don't say it like Tom Waits, that's for sure. That's no, I, I want to listen to Tom Waits. To this is the Tom Waits version. <laughs> that's Tom Waits. <laughs> we the same you, song. You, you sing that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I put a Tom Waits, because I saw him in movies first. I don't remember what it was. But I saw, and I was like, oh, I got to like familiarize myself with this great, amazing guy. And I put the song on it. It came out. There was like a tuba and an upright bass. And it was like, right? I'm like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And then he starts singing. I'm like, 
<laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> to quote Snoop Dogg, bitch, please. Oh, my God. Can't do it. Good stuff. Yeah, so Dennis is going to come. Where's the band playing? Where's What's the that? Dennis. Hey, there's Dennis. Dennis. What going? is it with the green thing? Everybody's That's wearing green, green but me. I don't Look, understand. Look. Oh, my God. We got Frank Antonio. I mean, for Christ's oh, sake here. Part. No, he's, he's wearing blue. I, I, I just, I, but I'm, but I'm drinking green. stuff that will turn me green. Hey, you have to is coming me. up. That's what it is. You have right. to keep me on the distribution list. Okay, you got to remember. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How you doing, Frank? What's going on? I'm doing man? well, thanks. Doing well, yeah. thanks a lot. Um, just you know, kicking around was a little bit late behind. Had to do a couple of things and getting ramped up. Got uh, got a whole slew of shows actually coming up. I'm I'm disgustingly busy for a change. It's nice. That's great. That's amazing. I can't, I'm so happy. Somebody's working. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's awesome. Good that, so, nice good that stuff. gear's being used. Exactly. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh my, my, I'm still not sure whether my PA system works or not. I have to take it out. That's the problem. You get your gear to the gig and you're like, you, you, put, the, you put the quarter inch in the jack and you hear yeah. and you're like, oh God, yeah. you like rotate it a little. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. fixes itself. Oh, no, I turn, turn every pot, turn yeah. every pot. Yeah. Three times. years of yeah. corrosion, yeah. you know, on the power cord. Yeah. You know, like, God. Yeah. I, I picked up a can of Deoxit for that very yes. purpose. It just lives in God the bag. Right no, there. dude, God bless Deoxit. It saved my ass. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I played out in a ski area with a band out of Philly that uh, a couple How'd of weeks ago. It was terrific. It was so good. Of course, you got oh, a ski nice. area, so you got a, an endless oh. supply of people that are done skiing that are like coming in. They're like, absolutely, yeah, their yeah. ski boots. And, you know, yeah, it, it, it was it was a great his, show yeah. with a great band. Mm -hmm. and, but buddies. I put my mm -hmm. I put my uh, cord into the amp, and it went. <laughs> I was like, oh no, ah! like, I don't know these guys, yeah. and they think now they think oh, now they know yeah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they could have just asked us. I exactly mean, right. That's right. Yeah, we could have screwed it up for you. Yeah. <laughs> what are friends for? We could have screwed it up for you. Exactly. No, it was a good gig. They're out of Philadelphia. So, I mean, that's three, uh, two and a half hours south of me. So yeah. I don't know how many gigs I'm going to play with them or whatever. They play Atlantic City. They play Philly, you know, and they're a great band, like a really good band. They, you know, they're like, you know, they do what we do. And then they do like a, they do Katy Perry and they do like, you know, for all ages yeah. kind of show. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and very talented people and, I don't know. I just literally talked my way in the band. I was there one day at the ski area, and I and I walked up and I said, "Damn, I wish I'd forgotten my keyboard." And you, there's nothing that people hate more than some idiot coming up on stage and like, "Hey, I want to play with your band." You know, then they get up and play, and it's like, "Oh my god, what's happening here?" <laughs> yeah, and, we, and we've they all were been like, there. "And they were like, great. Next time, come and bring your keyboard. You can play with us." I'm like, "What?" So. <laughs> got a gig out of it. It was great. Full disclosure, usually I'm the idiot doing that. I walk up That's the right. all the time. That's right. There's nothing worse. Yeah, you got you chops, know. man. You got <laughs> yeah, chops. You, the worst you, is a drunk chick coming up going, my friend can really <laughs> sing. And you're, <laughs> and you're going to be amazed. And then my thought problem is, oh, I'm going to be amazed, all right. Yeah. I bet <laughs> I'm going to be fucking amazed. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. well, I, I know that girl. I love rock and roll. <laughs> that happened yeah. at my jam once. I was I, In the olden days, I did my jam at Le Chateau, the big fancy. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh. Salem. They gave me a room. I knew the owner. They gave me a room, and I did this the jam there for a while after Georgetown Saloon. And uh, this beautiful young woman, 30 years old, whatever, comes a beautiful girl with diamond ear. Like, she is a, like, New South, North Salem, South Salem, rich debutante, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And she's drunk. She's so drunk. She's doing the Randy Stone impression of the drunk girl, right? <laughs> and she says, I have a great idea. I said, what? Oh, yeah. She says, the band will play Freebird and oh. I will play drums. Oh, we're like, God. We're like, are you okay with that? Will you play that? And she's like, absolutely. It's my favorite song in the world. I'm like, okay. <laughs> right. So we start we start playing Freebird and she plays the drums and it it looked so beautiful. She's playing and she's doing this and her hair and whatever. She has never sat behind a drum yeah. set in her life. Just never no once. Idea. <laughs> Couldn't and handle a cowbell. She yeah. didn't know what part of the drum <laughs> set to hit. Hard. She was hitting the sides of the drums and the like simple stands. Like she didn't know what to hit. And the sticks are flying and whatever. And and she does it. And when we get done, it was 
us a bus wreck. And we, we get done. And she goes, let's do it one more time. We're like, no. That's when you're like, honey, you're hot, but you ain't that hot. So, so then I look <laughs> over. So then I look. The B part of the story is I, lo- I look over. And there's Ray Simonelli and a couple of <laughs> other regulars, right, talking to her. She's a very beautiful girl, right? They're, like, all surrounding her, you know, like mm. the, the ne'er-do-well musicians surrounding the beautiful <laughs> the drunk girl at the bar. Are, yeah. And, yeah. and she's pulled the back of her jeans down. And this is, like, a multimillionaire's daughter, right? She pulls the back of her jeans down to show her free bird tattoo on her butt. Little coin slot there too. Let's ask what. <laughs> let's ask what Ray Simonelli when he's on the show next. What he remembers of that <laughs> fifteen God. years ago, like pretty crazy. Mm. I, I I have a drunk story as well, but it's nowhere near as cool as that. And the person was nowhere near as hot. But I don't I don't want to speak out of turn if somebody else had something. No, you know what? No, Save no, that no. story. I want to okay. hear it, but I'm going to have Will Baird play a song first. We're going to do that Absolutely. next. That's a deal. We're going to get Will clear in the next 15 minutes. I got to hear Will before I go. We have a world premiere video of, uh, that Launch Dennis me. directed. Yeah, man, I can't. I'm going to be watching while I stand next to the factory, the, the repair guy from my furnace, which is broken down. That's why I have to Coming leave. up next is yeah. Frank yeah. Antorno's Drunken Girl Story. All Fredericks. <laughs> All Fredericks repairs my furnace. <laughs> All right. Here what we do go. You got, Boys, of Sum- Boys of Summer. Right. John Henley. Oh, nice.
Very nice. Lovely. Thank you. Somebody either somebody was unmiked or there's something funky going on with my sound system where I was like I kept hearing stuff. All that kind right, of I thought like... the song was going to end, so I unmuted people and, and I heard somebody was playing along. That was <laughs> exactly, I was going like, and, and then somebody was like eating celery. Here I thought his drum machine was having a bag of chips. Wait, where did he go? Where did he go? <laughs> so what I, like, I sound so good. I'm like, I'm in the groove. I mean, I've got that moment. And what at the first, I was like, sound? wait, I think I hear an odd uh, guitar <laughs> playing along with Will Bear. Then I was like, and I saw Will go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I hear like crunching, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing running a show. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm noodling along with it, and then I see. It is un, you know, unmuted your mic. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's a duet now. Whoa. I thought the song was ending. Song. It's like, and Will was like, one more time. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm muting people. I'm muting, muting. muting. Uh, crap. Don't take this the right way, Will, but you're fun to play with. Uh, well, thank you. I, I'll take that uh, appropriately. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, Frank Antarno, yeah, you're on. Let me, let me hear your, your unsavory story. Well, oh, yeah. it's it's not so very unsafe. I mean, just I just I have two very quick drunk stories. Um, All right, <laughs> one one had to do with I was I was playing a solo gig up in Vermont at this place called the Clear River Inn, and it's right. this little dive bar right on the vast snowmobile trails. It's like the one gig for like a town and a half in any direction, and just me playing solo acoustic. And I start playing. I forget. I think it's Dead Flowers or something by the Stones, and this drunken lumberjack boy gets up and decides that he wants to play his part in 20 feet from stardom. Oh, there so it is. So he walks up and starts singing along. And where he sings along with is right in my face. So, like, Ooh. I'm here. The mic's here. He's here. Yeah, and that's about just, right. Yeah, just <clears throat> blowing, blowing Jägermeister breath into my face. <laughs> and he, and he was, a little COVID and mixed in. And yeah. he was just drunk enough for me to think that, you know, I could take him if I really wanted to. <clears throat> just big you enough that to. I knew it was going to be a problem <laughs> if I did. And I really liked my guitar at the time. So I just said, mm -hmm. okay, we'll just, we'll just walk this off. And the bartender, you know, how do you deal with that? And I'm like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You got to deal with mm -hmm. people. You know, you're in the public people business and you're going to come up it's and true. they're going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and then another one really quick. I was playing at the time with, with, uh, with Mark Bridgman, Tom Constable, and Dan Leibowitz, uh, with low maintenance. We we're playing at Jimmy Seaside <laughs> down in, uh, down in Stanford. <laughs> And there we go. I could yeah. just see Randy like going berserk in the corner, there, Frank. Right. I'm sorry. Yes. I, was, I was laughing. Yes. With it. It's, it's yes. Muted. Yes. Keep yeah, going, Frank. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, it's okay. It's all right. It's not that great a story. I need all the help I can get. So, so just we're we're the tail end of the night, and then there's this, this one girl who's just she's been having fun all night, and she's just doing the whirling dervish thing, and just you know you can see the gyro failure lights just starting to flash. <laughs> And we're we're like we're right in the middle of Jessica, like right, you know, just Tom's in mid solo doing his best Dickie Betts impression, and the girl does this spinorama thing, catches her heel on the back of the the monitor wedge, oh, she goes ass over tea kettle over the monitor wedge, and sits on Tom's volume pedal, turning his guitar off mid solo. Oh, oh. Ooh, wow! And she's just sitting there, like you know the video Man. games where the characters like this, you know, and you can see the little stars around there. She's just sitting <laughs> like that, <laughs> and Tom's playing, and he look, and he just say, "Get the fuck out!" You know, just screaming. Oh my god! Yeah, we had a on the Blues Patrol. We had the same thing happen, uh, but a woman danced backwards, tripped over the monitor. She hit uh, the guitar player. He's pe Jake in the Blues Patrol. He peels out of the way. She falls into a five thousand dollar saxophone, oh. knocking the the mouthpiece that went backwards and pierced the classic Fender amp, the the uh, the the grill and the speaker cone, and bent the saxophone, and then got up and went home. You know? Oh my God! Ten thousand dollars damage later. Uh, yeah. that, that sounds like Rube Goldberg gone mad. You know? <laughs> but on the bright side, she didn't remember a thing. The, yeah, that's right. right. The, like, lucky yeah, her. There was no lawsuit. There was no call from her lawyer. On it. That's right. <laughs> and no one could find her. You know, the place, yeah. places that are the toughest are the places that have, and there are many places like this that don't, that don't have a stage. You know, yeah, you want to on the floor. There's yeah. no yeah. separation between you and, yeah. and the hoi polloi, you know. So I used right. to play on Wednesday nights for years with Mike Malazzo and Eddie Wright and uh, 
and oh man, I'm forgetting the drummer's name, but good drummer. And, and, you know, we used to play there and, you know, in that place, again, it's just like, they just carve out a space in the bar floor and there you are. And I remember seeing, you know, I seeing somebody hit Malazzo's like mic stand and, you know, he caught, it caught him right in the tooth. Oh, and, yeah. Right. And it, like, it break the tooth, you know, but like a month later, the tooth went dead and he, uh, and he like lost the tooth. So oh, I, oh. having witnessed that, I was super sensitive to that kind of thing. And, yeah. and I would always warn people who were on the stage with me who weren't paying attention. I'm like, yeah. you know, watch out for Keep this. An watch out. <laughs> and I developed, you know, this thing, you know, guys, guys dancing in front of you and they always back up on you. And then eventually they hit your mic stand, they hit the music stand, whatever. They hit something. Right. And then they turn around and they go like, oh, sorry, man. You know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah so sorry I, for I, killing I, your tooth. Yeah. Like the boom mic. I would ramp that thing up and I would go, whew, like I would really whip it around. It would yeah. smack the guy on the head. Mm-hmm. And then the guy would turn and look at me and I go like, oh, sorry, man. That does it. Sorry, man, makes it all good. You know, like, all right, two like, things before I go. I have to go. But one, go to Home Depot, all you gigging musicians, and they have an LED rope light. That you you lay out, people actually pay attention to it like it's a nuclear oh, war zone. Like it's like, like the they, line they don't, you can. They cross. don't violate that. All the dancers, mm-hmm. everybody, they somehow don't mm-hmm. violate. Best twenty dollars you can make for that. Okay. And then yeah, back to to Smart Will's enough. song. Mm-hmm. Back to Will's song. If you've never seen it, that was written by Mike Campbell, mm-hmm. guitarist for Tom Petty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you have, I won't even paraphrase it because I'll butcher the story. But it's a fantastic story about how he wrote it and how it almost got lost and how he yeah. delivered it to Henley and how Henley loved it. So YouTube, yeah, Mike right, Campbell, I'm, Boys to Summer, and how, and how it came to be. Yeah, and with that, that I know your evening's going to be greatly diminished. Oh, my but God. No, not that. you, Randy. Oh, oh he's, he's gone. Wow. Yeah, and he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. I have a repair guy outside the front door that says, do not lock broadcasting in progress or something like that and so he's like standing outside are... my doors with a sign so i'm gonna go all right well good to see you it's as a matter of fact i'm going to uh drop off jmtv we're gonna do this please stick around everybody we're gonna do yeah. this music video premiere and uh and we'll be oh man we'll be right back for more shenanigans right after this <laughs> Hey, there they are. How are y'all doing? So uh, who do we yeah. have here? Uh, Dennis, introduce us to your Okay, friend. so I don't know if you guys remember Gar. He's played on a couple of my COVID. Uh, I do remember him. How are you doing? Good to see you, stuff. Really good guitarist out of Utah. We played many bands for several years with Gar, me and Gar. That's and great. Uh, he runs a studio back there. One day he says, you got to hear this song. So he played me Audrey's song. I said, oh, man, I got to do a video for that one. That's so, great. I don't know. Do you want to introduce her? Gar? Yeah, this is this is Audrey, 15-year-old awesome kid. I've been working with her since she was eight. Right. And uh, she's singer-songwriter. And she did all the <laughs> recorded the whole Yeah, she's, song. she did the majority of the mixing, mastering, all of it. Uh, on this for this video so yeah that's terrific so tell us uh, <laughs> nice to meet you Audrey tell, tell us a little bit about the song what uh, what where did this come from uh so I don't, it just it was kind of a weird story so I knew this lady and she had a brother and her and I like the topic of addiction came up so we started talking about it and she told me how her brother was really addicted to drugs oh, and wow. he had kids and he was really close with the family and I remember her telling me that when he was on drugs or when he was addicted, he wasn't just losing himself. He was losing the people around him. Right. His kids didn't want to be around him and his wife wanted nothing to do with him. And it just kind of brought the idea to me of like, 
why don't I write a song from his perspective? And I didn't even know the guy. So right. it, it, it was just different. I wanted to try something new and I really liked that it. That turned out really good. Thank you. And then, so then what, what happened? So how did Dennis, how did you get involved in, uh, in making Well, like I said, Gar, I was talking with Gar one day and he says, you got to hear this song. So he played the song for me and it's like, oh man, that's got a great, great song. So I took a video right. for it anytime. Well, with no further ado, I'm going to play the video that I'll bring everybody back to yuck it up after the video. And <laughs> here it comes. All she wanted was to be happy and free. Feel all that warm light on her skin again She felt like she was trapped and gone from the real world Her hands were numb and her heart was dark when she said I'm just longing for Song. That's terrific. That was really nice work. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was fun. It's real easy to do a video when you got a good solid song underneath it like that. Oh, thank you. It wouldn't be possible yeah. without you. Thank you. 
Yeah, really great. Really, really enjoyed. Yeah, I I made the mistake of watching that in the car driving back from my gig last week. Yeah. And on the road, and I was like, my eyes were glued to my iPhone, which is also my navigation. <laughs> it's right here, and I'm like watching it going down the highway, going, "Wow!" And they're like, "Oh, I gotta watch it," you know. Watch where you're going. Always with the great choices. Don't ever exactly. change. Exactly. <laughs> they say you can't. Yeah. You can't, you can, can you watch TV while you drive? You can't talk on the phone, but you can watch TV, right? So, yeah. That'll be fine. What yeah, could go wrong? Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, we really enjoyed that. So, what else do you do with music? Do you perform live at all, Audrey? Yeah, I do. I just perform locally, like places in Utah, and I try to do like restaurants or retirement homes. Just right, that's great. You're in Utah. I yeah. am. Yes. Where, whereabouts? Um, Kaysville to Ogden area. Oh, okay. Yeah, my son's in Salt Lake. He's yeah, he's about thirty miles north of Salt Lake. Right. He went. Uh, my once my son went to the U, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was terrific. That was that was really was great good. to see that. Thanks for sharing that with us, Dennis and, and Audrey. Yeah. So uh, can I ask, who who did the mix on that? Audrey did. Oh, wow. Oh, go ahead. The majority of it, yeah. Uh, very nice. Now, I got um, earbuds in, and I could hear the panning of everything happening. I mean, it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. It is really job. cool. So now, is that a is that a saxophone that's playing? Like, forgive me, but is that a trumpet yeah. or a saxophone? It's a saxophone, and I remember Gar was like so confused when I told him I wanted a saxophone, and I was like, "Nope, we're doing a saxophone. I don't care if you want it in there or not." Did you play the sax on that? <laughs> no. no. Who did that? Who did that? Oh, we hired a, a friend of mine. His name is Jason Cousineau. Uh, right. And uh, I just, it, he showed up at the studio and I got them started. And then I just excused myself and said, you're producing this. <laughs> that's really cool. Well, that, that, that sounded great. I enjoyed the, the contrast between the voice of the story and the sax. And, right. and it, it, it's an, uh, the sax came out. Like, I, I'm a producer and a recording engineer. And some, at some point, so I was like, is that a trumpet? Like, what's happening here? Like, it's kind of a very cool, moody uh, track. And I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Great. Well, c congratulations on that. Really nice to have you on Jam TV to see that. There, there'll be more to come from her. From her, oh, I'm sure. Are you excellent. That's She's got great. stuff on the, all the streaming platforms too. So if you want, want to hear any of her other stuff, where can we find that? Tell us how to look for that on Spotify or other places. Audrey Nicole on all the everywhere: Spotify, Apple Music. Oh. Okay. All all right, and I, I only have one more thing to say to you, Audrey. Do not forget us when you're famous, okay? No. <laughs> when you're famous, I have said this to a bunch of people who became famous, and they're like, who were you? I don't remember who you are. You, you can forget me. I won't mind. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly forgettable. Really great. Well, we'll be right back with, with Frank Giontorno right after this break. Jam TV. Hey, I, hey. let, I let those guys go, and I let uh, and, and I let Dennis go. But if Dennis, if you want to come back, then hang out, and I'll bring you back into the studio. I didn't know if you wanted to go or stay. So, so uh, that was great. That was actually kind of, it's really awesome to see young people who are producing good work. Absolutely. Yes. I, I thought the sax was a great touch. I, I really like the sax. Right. It was, yeah, it was kind of, it was unusual. Like, it was an unusual sensibility to have that there. You know, it, it, you know, like, so often a singer-songwriter will do a song, it'll be on a guitar or a piano, and they sing, and they got drums and bass. That's it. Mm -hmm. And But to have another instrument, it's, it's almost like Tom Waits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had a very film noir kind of vibe. To right, it. exactly. Yeah. It took you on a journey, on like a dreamy journey. You know? mm -hmm. right. Almost yeah, expected, yeah, like well, a gravelly yeah. voice smoking a cigarette with a vat of scotch to start doing a monologue underneath it. Right, exactly. 
Exactly. Nice girl. So, uh, yeah. Good so, stuff, Frank, man. what do you got? Play us something good. Um, well, I don't know if something good. I'm not. I'm not really capable of that. Um, so let's see here. Is that coming up? I can't wait to. Oh yeah, it sounds great. Yes. All right, lovely. I don't know what it is for this thing. But I I got to figure out why this is because all of a sudden, when I bring me up in here, I can't hear myself through the damned headphones. I gotta, I gotta call Justin at Sweetwater. He'll send you a new doohickey oh, to yeah. make that work and candy. Yeah, and candy. Here, here you go, Frank. Perfect. Some candy, Frank. Lovely. From Sweetwater. Yes, from Sweetwater. There you go. Because we're uh, idiots, Jam TV is not sponsored by Sweetwater. I don't know. Did, did, did anybody do anything to, to mark the passing of uh, Gary Rosington yet? I don't know. No. Uh, what? What? Happened? I post it. I post it. Yes, you did. I post it. I believe he was the uh, the last man standing. The yes. Lineup of, yes. Uh, of Leonard Skinner, and he. Uh, that is correct. He wow. unfortunately shuffled off his mortal yeah. coil earlier this week. So. Um, you 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 know Frank real quick. Gary had nine lives too. Oh yeah, oh. at least. You know that. Well, you guys know that. Tell, I mean, tell us why. I, that's what I'm talking about. He survived that. Yeah, he survived that. I, and, <laughs> and I think I believe Oak Tree, you're in my way, was the line that was referenced to him in a car and a bottle of Jack Daniels right. and, and Correct. that smell. So yeah, Correct. So, yeah, he definitely Correct. Uh, he he owned the uh, the the rock and roll lifestyle T-shirt for for quite a while. I am sure. Yes. So. So anyway, so this is uh, this is this is one of his. There we go. Right, now I think I got it figured out. Now I'm cooking with grease, effects and everything. Nice. There we go.
train roll on. Nice. Very nice. Nice. Rest awesome. in peace, Gary. That's right. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Wow. I, actually, I never got around to seeing those guys live, but uh, you stuff. and your backup singers. <laughs> <laughs> That's were the, were the voices in my head that loud this time? I know. I hear them right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, crap. Damn button. I thought I was. I was thought I was turning the tuner on. There you go. No, that sounded terrific. That was nice. great. Thank you. No, I missed that that he passed away. I, when did that happen? Sunday. Um, Sunday, yeah. Sunday, seventy-one. And how did you find out? They because they didn't push that on my feed or however I get my news nowadays. They mm -hmm. they didn't let me know. It Somebody, was out there pretty. It was out there pretty big, and like Facebook, mm -hmm. it was out there really big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I, Sunday, I, yeah, wow. Well, well, yeah. well, everybody knows you hate Southern Rock. Ed, so. There you go, right? Oh. Probably, yeah. No, you know what's funny? Here's my Southern Rock story. I was working in an <laughs> auto finance company doing like I was like a bean counter, and I uh, there was a guy uh, <clears throat> who worked for us. This was in Norwalk. Can't remember his name. I, I could look it up because he was a, the drummer in Molly Hatchet. <laughs> right which is a famous southern rock mm -hmm. band right yeah, yeah. and one day he like came into my office and he's like hey mind if i come in and sit out and i go okay he's like, i hear you do some music on the side like i was not playing you know out or anything like that and i'm like yeah how did you hear that and he said yeah i don't know i knew some people who do play with you sometimes oh really and he said yeah i was the drummer in molly hatchet i'm like what are you working here for and he's like yeah you know you don't get rich being the drummer in molly hatchet so yeah wow I'm not so sure. I'm not I sure anybody Southern in Molly Hatchet got rich. Yeah. What's that? I, I, I'm not sure anybody in Molly Hatchet got rich, to be honest. Right. With you, so. There's so many bands. Like it's so hard. Like there are bands that you. I saw a New York Times article. No, a, a Wall Street Journal article. With the, remember they did the little. I don't know if they still do it, but the little uh, illustration, you know, like to like get an etching of a person on the cover. They yeah. would do a profile, right? And and it was on. Um, what was it? Uh, the girl who fronts, I think it's the band Scandal. Patty Is Smith. It? Patty, Patty Smith. Smith, right? She's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yep. Smith or Smythe? Which which I get confused. Uh, it, it looks like Smythe, but I think it's Smith. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, Patty Smith. She throws so, a wire. She's married somehow. to John McEnroe. Mm -hmm. There you right. go. There you go. And and so and I was a big fan at the time. And, and 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 it was front page of Wall Street Journal. And it was basically saying that here are the economics of her tour and how her her players, you know, they were like, you know, top five record, whatever it was, and everybody was, you know, into her band, and they made like the the musicians came back from the tour with maybe twenty grand, and she made a salary for two years while she did this of like fifty grand, but that's what fifty grand was a lot of money, you know, so like mm -hmm. that was in the nineties or the eighties, nineties I guess it was. And uh, but, you know, 50 grand for a couple of years and then you slip into obscurity and you better know how to sell houses or do whatever it is you're going to do. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Well, I mean, she had, you know, she had the she had two pretty decent hits with Scandal and particularly in MTV era. Very big. Right. And then and then she you know, she had she sort of went off on her own and she had that song, The Warrior. And then she had another song mm -hmm. that would do it with Don Henley. The Warrior. Right. And I mean, those were. Those are pretty, and she yeah, was yeah. on the eyes too. Like she was cute as hell. And those scandal songs, I, I actually play one of them, but they they're really good songs. I mean, that was one of those fun bands from the. We 90s. we played that in a band cover band in Colorado that I played with for a long time. We did scandal, and I'd never heard of the band before, but I became a big fan. And it's funny, there was there were a lot of bands. Like I missed the the music era that you got to enjoy. You know that that Fillmore East and you know Bill yeah. Holman, and and. You know, like like some really amazing artists that started kind of small and ended up boom. You know, like world world famous names. Uh, but then there were the eighty bands that was kind of more my era, and uh, and those bands are just they're gone. You know, well, well like, yeah, yeah that I, was they are and they're not. I mean, I think I think that you know you'd be surprised. You know, Howard Jones still plays. You know, 
Six well, no, they're all out there still they, working, but my point is that they don't have gold plated toilets. True. You know, true. they don't they don't truly live the rock and roll lifestyle. They don't have yeah. the mansion on Headley Grange like Jimmy Page did, you know, right. where he was because he yeah. was a cheap bastard. That's but some story. entertainment lawyer is, you know, paying their mortgage on oh, their exactly. ten million dollar house, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some somebody who managed to sign that thing away because they managed to sign them, you know, with you know, with an advance against future earnings. And then, well, we did all of this, you know, and it's, and it's such a game of three card money for musicians. Yeah. It's like my, my daughter, you know, she's, she's thinking about, you know, she's very, very talented. She's really good. And I'm like, look, <laughs> you could try and do this, but the odds on you getting there and to the point where you're going to survive financially on that right. are beyond Powerball odds. You better have talent and you better have good songs. It doesn't songs even and matter better... what talent you have. Ooh. It doesn't matter. Right. It really doesn't, because most of the stuff that's a massive hit nowadays is stuff that's done by a celebrity and a guy with a laptop. Yep. You know, that's what most of the stuff that's out there and trending on TikToks and whatever the hell it. is that's out there. Um, you know, gen generally, that's so true. But it's funny. I get a I get a text last night from my daughter, who's who's at the Capitol last night and the local band, local to, you know, Wilton, Norwalk, Fairfield County, Goose is playing there. And Goose has, has freaking, you know, slotted themselves in, you know, dead fish Goose. Like Goose is there now. Yeah. Hey, selling out, you know, Selling out Radio City, playing a four-night stint at the Capitol Theater. Yeah, you right. Know, it's like it's, it's not, you know, crazy private jet, you know, no. Led Zeppelin shit, but still... Yeah, you know you're going to make money doing that, you know, and well, yeah. and there's an inexhaustible interest in jam band stuff. I mean, oh, it's just course. it's in trucks. how you know how popular it is. You know, you right. can you can put like Rowayton is so bizarre. You know, they they had like this show last the Fourth of July. They had a show there, and they had four bands that played. They were all jam bands. And the song "Deal" by Jerry Garcia was played three times that night, and I'm just wow. like, I'm <laughs> and, like, even and the cycle is like complete. It just band, keeps going. You know, just, go a little uh, deeper than that, would you? You know, like, you would think. You would think. That's that's one of the things I love about Tedeschi Trucks, actually, because I mean they're one oh, of those well, bands yeah. that are going and mm. just that that whole band is just unbelievable to watch. Just they're all on a separate level, and the depth of playlist that those guys have. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them a half a dozen times. I don't think I've seen them play more than a handful of songs twice. Right. They right. just do a completely different set from mm -hmm. tour to tour. It's just unbelievable. And, and then they, they'll go out know, and they they inherited the the almonds, you know, the almonds oh, thing of playing right. at the mm -hmm. beacon, like doing a residency at the beacon. Right. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the, the most amazing thing, you know, when the almonds did it towards the end too. The people that they had on those gigs, like like you know, one night, yeah, one night it's Eric Clapton and they play all this Derek and the Domino stuff, amazing. But another night it's like Jimmy Smith, the organ player, and another night it's like, you know, like uh, Jerry Jamo, the great freaking bass player from like Aretha, and like you know, it's like they had a real mix of people, which is the that's a gas, and that's you know, that's I mean, it's also with Tedeschi and Trucks. I mean, freaking you know, Trucks is just to me a god. He, he wow. is. I'm I'm enough of a blasphemer to say that he he is very possibly in my book a better slide player than some other people who have much bigger names and were in band that know. preceded that. Yeah, I agree with that. I I always put it as he is from the same planet that Dwayne was from, and we just leave yeah. it at that. You know, I mean, yeah. they, 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 yeah. he's in that same universe with regards to what's going on, yeah. and just and and the, the most disgusting part about it is a. He makes it look effortless. Oh. And B, he's not even an asshole. You can't even mm -hmm. hate him no. for that. He's a mm -hmm. nice fucking guy. Mm -hmm. No, he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, to me, he is the shit, man. You know, like, ah, it's just like, unbelievable. you know, there's a few, there's a few guys that I like who play slide today. But, yeah. but I mean, he, he's really, it, it, as you said, it's so friggin' effortless. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and the other irony also is that, you know, that, then you've got, you know, his wife. Yeah. Who is, she's okay. Yeah. She, yeah, she doesn't stink, you know. And right. they had children. Those those yep. children, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. that kid's probably gonna be like a real estate agent or something. I mean, they've never what they look like, but just you know, what are the odds? You know, and maybe the kid's almost as good, but just how the hell do you compete with that?
Mm. Well, right. exactly. I mean, Derek did it. You know, like Derek was, yeah. like, you know, he was a legacy. You know, like he. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, but you know, he kind of had an out because he was, mm -hmm. you know, he was the nephew. You know, it's like he wasn't a direct progeny, so to speak. I mean, he grew up in the family, but it wasn't like mm -hmm. a mantle being passed down directly. So he wasn't thing. he wasn't Book Trucks's uh, Butch Trucks's kid. No, he was his nephew. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's yeah he's the nephew. But, but that's close enough. That's still, like, you know, but, but, you know, I mean, and that whole thing. I mean, you know, his name was Derek, you know, and then there's other kids that are named Django and Dwayne and Dickie. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, they're all in there. You know. yeah. But yeah. Well, Victor Wooten had an interesting thing on that, talking about growing up with music. He says, if you look at people our age, we're playing with another adult. It's like, I won't play with you unless you're good. But when you're playing with kids, you'll go, okay, no, that's not how it goes. And so you'll help them along. You know, so kids are more likely to, to get better over time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, Plus, they all play multiple musical instruments now. You could go on mm -hmm. YouTube and learn how to play anything, whereas right. in the olden days, like, oh, I get, I get one day a week with Mrs. So-and-so, the piano teacher. With the guy that would lock me in the house unless my mom came to the door and paid him cash to let me out. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, most most of the crap behind me is, is stuff for my kid. You know, I mean... Yeah. I used to be a drummer once upon a time, but I play lefty, so I haven't I haven't set it around. I haven't set it up the right, right way yet. <laughs> but um, but yeah, she does about she plays about six different instruments. Yeah, she, she'll she'll have she has fun at school where you know she does this little annoying thing. She'll play like the Verizon sound at the do da 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 da. You know, she'll play yeah. that to annoy somebody, and the person will take the instrument away from. Them. She'll just find another instrument and play the same thing on that instrument. She just goes right. around the room pissing people. I off. envy that I so much. You know that you're not limited song. by what you play. It's, it, I think that's great. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's it's it's. I'm I'm incredibly lucky to be you know remotely near that and. You know, have any kind of modicum of, of, of influence into that. So I'm just. But you know, how do you, my dad was like a balls to the walls businessman, right? Like he was not a musician, an artist, anything like that. And he, and he used to be like, you know, yeah, music's a good hobby, but don't, you know, yeah. don't ever or whatever. And I was a great disappointment to him, even though I did business for 20 years and I did that. But he was always like, yeah, but you go do that music thing on the weekends and, you know, yeah, weekend you should play golf and right. And so he was never he supported me in that he like bought me my first accordion. He bought me my first keyboard, you know, and so he was very supportive, but he didn't believe in music. And he's probably right. Like, how do you reconcile <laughs> that? when you have a kid and you want your kid to be successful and you're like, of course. Oh yeah, go be a musician. Do that. Yeah, that'll like, work out. Yeah. Right. You know. and so, you know, to some extent I understand that. And, and you as a dad, you are a talented guy and your daughter's talented. And how, but how do you say, go chase that dream of being a musician, yeah. you know, unless you're willing to like fund that forever. That's hard. You know, it's, very yeah, it's, hard. it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's a difficult conversation to have with it. I mean, you know, I mean, she's talking about, you know, well, I want to be a music teacher. I'm like, okay, I want you to think very hard about that statement for a little while. Look at right. the school system and just, there's, you know, let's, let's just do the math. The on it. Crunch yeah. the numbers on that. But Although thankfully, I'll tell you, I'm a music teacher now. I've never been happier. This is the weird thing. Oh, no, I, yeah, well, I gave up on, um, I, I gave up on the Fairfield County, whatever, executive li international lifestyle. Well, no, she's talking about giving guitar lessons, guy. <laughs> She's yeah, not right, talking right, right. about a, like a teacher. She's talking about just like guitar lessons. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I, that's what I do. I, you know, I teach electronic music at an inner city school part time. You know, and but I get to do. I don't think it's work at all. Like getting there, driving on the road is work. But you know, like being there with the kids is. I love it, and I feel very fulfilled doing that. But I, I once had this. Uh, I played uh, with a drummer, a Russian drummer, a real cool guy, and his girlfriend, like who was twenty five, and a trader on Wall Street. Uh, mm -hmm. Came out on my boat, you know, in Westport in the harbor, and uh, that's when I was living on the boat for 20 years. And she, uh, she said, like very blunt, right? She Russian girl, and she said, um, "You know, you're you're 50 years old. This was just that mm -hmm. many years ago. You're 50 years old. Like, how do you feel that you haven't made it in music yet? You keep trying, but you haven't <laughs> made it. Like, you're, like, you're playing the black duck, and you're, you know, like." <laughs> and, and he and I look at each other, right? And I'm like. I don't know. I've got 225 gigs this year. I'm making it, whatever. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm living on a boat. And I'm smiling. But what she meant was, 
how come you're not Elton John? How come you're not, you know, living in a 15 million pound house, you know? Right. And you have to, you know, maybe you're going to hit the lottery. Maybe you're going to be the next big thing. And the guy who's got the record that's outselling you a thousand to one is, has no talent and you're amazing. But it's very hard to make money in the business. You just better love it. Mm-hmm. You know, as long I mean, as I can me, pay for my gas and my instruments and equipment, I feel I'm successful. If right. Your intention is to like you know quote make it in the business. You're really in the wrong business because oh, yeah, you know absolutely. basically it you know it like other things you know it isn't a choice. You're a freaking musician because you're a musician. Like you're a musician because. Mm-hmm. Your whole existence is filtered through music somehow. You know, I, I, I come into a city, yeah, I walk into, you know, ShopRite and I'm whistling to whatever is playing on there until I walk out. You know, it's just like, it's just there. It's like music is what it is. And, you know, what's funny about, you know, the, the bands that I see, you know, the young, the young bands who are, who are so much better than the young bands I was in when I was like 18. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're so much better, you know. Because they were in but, School of Rock and they have YouTube, you know. Yeah. But you know what? They didn't buy their own. They didn't buy their first stamp. They didn't buy their guitar. They didn't buy any of that mm-hmm. stuff. The parents set up the basement for them. And I'm not I'm not making a dig. Understand, you know, because I, <laughs> I, did, I did the same. They have this shit for me thing. too, guy. Come on. But I mean, you know, to me, I was, when I started playing, you know, I do, all I want to do was be in other bands that were in like my junior high school. I just wanted to be in a band, and I was I was relegated to the basement with like you know a Victrola of some sort, you know. And I sat there and just shedded and shedded and shedded and shedded, and you know got to a place where you know where I could play and and it developed my ear and all that was good. But you know, there was no subsidy to this thing. It was like an interest. You know, like you said, Ed. You know, the, your parents of a certain generation would be like, "Yeah, but have a backup or yeah, have, go do some landscaping yeah. and get a real yeah. job, make some yeah. real money." You know, well, don't play no, that guitar. You know, there's no, there's no frame of reference for them because they're not musicians. You know, and if they if they are musicians, they'll get it a little bit more than if they're not. You know, like. My, my first day of first grade, I came home and I told my parents I wanted an accordion, right? And the, the, the good news was my dad was square enough that he thought anything on Lawrence Welk was success. So he got me an organ, a Lawrence Welk model, Thomas organ, and an accordion, nice. you know? Nice. And, and it's like, because he thought, like, in his way, he was like, maybe he'll play the accordion. Maybe he'll be the next Lawrence Welk. Yeah. Or at least uh, play on the show. Brilliant. It could be Pretty worse great. things to be. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you could wake up in the morning and say, today all I want to do is make money playing the theremin. You know, you could. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. Although, so, I woke up this morning super happy. I got a new musical instrument. Hold on. I got to get it. Oh, and here it is. Show and tell with Ed. Show and tell. It's another synthesizer. No, yeah. you won't even believe this thing. This is the craziest thing in the world. A guy in uh, Vancouver, Washington, not Vancouver, Canada made this for me right right so this is a cassette deck yeah. like a like a no, walkman uh, or something oh like yeah you walkman. were talking about this last week yeah right mm-hmm. and it's got right and it's got knobs you like put a like a project box mm-hmm. on it and put like a jack on it and a, and a speed control and this is crazy because you could take like uh you could you use the essentially it's a synthesizer that uses the tape as the oscillator. So you could put, mm-hmm. you make your own tapes and you have a Mellotron. You know, you could play mm-hmm. different notes or whatever on it. But um, you could also put in, you know, an old Kenny Rogers record and like change the speed and change it. You can control it while it's playing. And, you know, this makes a theremin look almost sane. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Where does he get such wonderful toys? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I found a guy who makes these. He like it's his little cottage industry out of his house that he sells like four or five of them a day, and it keeps him in the money. You know, hey, it, you know whatever 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 keeps you keeps you sane. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. like just just to put a button on that whole conversation thing about parents. Like there was a there was a guy I grew up with, good musician, nice guy, very creative, and his father was very very old school. This guy was like the true bat phone trouble in Gotham. <laughs> And, yeah. and literally the guy was like, you know, this, he was just like, there was a no Saturday for a student kind of thing. And he just right. mercilessly drove this kid 
to excel and to be an architect and this, that, and the other. And it got to the point where when I was playing in bands with him, you know, I mean, he was, you know, we were like, you know, 18, 20, whatever. And he would have to like tell his dad that he was going to the library to study. And he would have to lower his base out his window on a rope oh, to me. God. So then, you know, so he wouldn't walk out of the house with the instrument when we had a gig. And then his father would lock him out of the house at 10 o'clock. So he ended up sleeping on my couch, you know. And this went on for years. And he ended up graduating with a degree in architecture. And he promptly threw that away, moved to Ithaca, New York, got a job in a bagel factory and was playing bass in a band. That's And great. now I think he's an electrician. Um, That's great. You know, I mean, but, just, but, you know, but, but all of that stuff of driving this guy and, you know, like, and my father had a conversation with, with this guy's dad at one point and the guy and, and just, and he had this, this very, he, he was, he was from Argentina, but, but he was from a very specific point of Argentina. If you follow me. <laughs> the boys from Brazil part of Argentina. Yes, 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 yes. Knock, knock. He will ask the questions that way. So, um. So anyway, so this guy goes to my home and says, so what do you think of these guys doing music and this and that? And my father said, you know, they're having fun. They're making a little bit of money. What the hell? Let them do it. You know, they're right. young. Yeah. And the guy looks at my father and goes, I think it stinks. Right. It's like, okay. It makes nope. no Uh-oh. sense. Wait, being a musician makes no logical sense at all. You're like, okay, I'm going to go play my $75 gig with my $5,000 instruments. You know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cost of living has gone up 75, 75% or whatever, and you're still getting paid by the, the same scale that you were getting. And I'm worried, like, how am I going to yeah. pay for this? Like, I don't know. I, I can't afford it, but I have to have it. You know? Yep. Crazy. Absolutely. Do another crazy. song for us, Frank. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's try and do. Do a song your father would disapprove of. Come on. <laughs> do. Apropos, I think this is this is a good one here. It's one by Bruce Coburn. Thank you. 
Waiting for a Waiting for a miracle Scuffle for a dollar, struggle for a dime. Get your head out of the past, try to move on down the line. Why does history take such a long, long time? Nice, Frank. Nice. That one actually kind of works with the conversation we were having, I suppose, waiting for a miracle. <laughs> yeah, right. You nice. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, music, going. Music's an addiction. We all have to, you know, you, we do it because we want to do it. We do it because we wake up and we're like, oh, I got to get an instrument. Go play something. I don't know. I, I don't we're know why we do it. Musicians, music chose us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, I would rather be playing music than just about anything. And I, t I do, like, yeah. I'm like, I play, I do some writing or I do some, you know, a video work or whatever. And I go play the ukulele. I'll play a keyboard. I'll, you know, anything just to, you know, maybe I'm just ADD and I like to <laughs> express it through my music. But exactly. You know. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's definitely an addiction, which is, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's a little bit less expensive than drugs. And, you know, so long as you do it right. <laughs> yeah, right. And so long as you don't like, you know, flirt with the wrong girl at the wrong time, it's not always, you know, it's not, it's potentially not dangerous. It's actually <laughs> funny. You, you say that, right. I, I remember when I was 19 or 18, when I played in my first band in college. And I remember thinking like, I hadn't spent any time in bars before I'm out in Colorado and, <laughs> and like every Every movie that I ever saw, like Patrick Swayze was the bartender, <laughs> oh, and everybody was getting like their, their it, like, oh yeah, boom, you know, like there yeah. were fights every night in the bar. And in my entire time of playing thousands and thousands of gigs, like I like to figure out how many gigs I played. In that time, there were maybe four fights that I saw. Like I did not see that many fights. Uh, I saw somebody break a bottle angry. I saw somebody like try to karate, you know, karate, some other guy, but, um, only, only four fights in for 40 years or whatever it is, 30 years. So not bad. Well, I had a couple of uncomfortable conversations with drunk boyfriends who thought I was paying too much attention to their girl at the time. Or you two. were. We all know exactly how smart I remember I am, that okay? I wasn't drunk either, you know. <laughs> and but but on to to a similar vein i mean just just to go back to and, and when i was younger when i was doing the same thing my father for a hobby drove a race car 
talk about something that's expensive <laughs> yeah. and addictive and moderately dangerous. It might kill you. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know, so you need fireproof underwear. What's the right. big deal? <laughs> right. But um, but I was expressing an interest in that when I was like 15, 16 years old, because that's what I grew up around. And, and my mother was like, okay, so you're 17. The drinking age is 21. Go play music in bars. That'll, that'll work out. Why don't you get that going on? <laughs> that'll work and all out of his, better. Yeah, and, then all, you know, and then I'm playing a guitar, and then I'm noticing, ooh, girls are looking at me. I never, know, I never saw any girls at the racetrack look at my dad when he was driving around like that. When he had grease hunters from the, maybe there's something to this. And that just right. kind of went off in that direction. And, um, right. you know, and on the other hand, I... Never got to drive a race car, but oh well. There you go. <laughs> go to Lime Rock. Give him five hundred dollars. I'll let you. Oh, you know, fun. Uh, I, I, well, I did that thing, but that's not that's not driving a race car. That's driving a glorified go kart that you might yeah, right. pay a lot of money for if you right. screw yeah. it up. I got a Mini Cooper. That's a glorified go kart. I you know I go around yeah. the mountain roads up here. You know. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, of I'll tell you, I had a Porsche. Everybody has to own one in their life because they are awesome. I never had one. No, what what, what Porsche did you have? I had the Boxster, the 9, 986. Right. It was fun, though. Put the top down, just cruise the canyons. Oh, you had that in Utah? Yeah, in Utah. So you got and up on the road, roads. roads and right. There was one road down in, by Provo that you'd go down. It was about 10 miles long, and about every half mile or to a mile, you'd have to stop and rest. It's just like this the whole way. <laughs> right, right, right. I went up a canyon. What's that canyon that goes out of Salt Lake? And uh, it's uh, there's an amazing hamburger place up the canyon. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, it's one of the cottonwoods. Yeah, right. Probably. Like amazing, great road. Or Probably big cottonwood going up towards. Did it on the motorcycle road. trip. You know, that was really yeah, fun. Yeah, some fun roads up there. Yeah, no, I never got into. There's a lot of hobby roads here in Connecticut, but I wouldn't dare go five over sure. the speed limit on those back roads because there's so many blind corners. Yeah, Absolutely. that's that, that's that's a great way to you know, and yeah. The, yeah well, out out to, here uh, at PA, there's just not as many people, so you know you could you could go off into the <laughs> into the national park. Don't mean a uh, ranger doesn't catch you, but you know, tail of the dragon down in North Carolina, I think it is. I did the tail of the dragon. What what is it? I'm gonna get it wrong, but it's like it's like 300 turns in 11 miles, like yeah, something turns. like that. Yeah, there are just tons and, of them, and like people. The problem, so I did it at 25 miles an hour on my motorcycle, like 25 or 30. I'm like, mm, hairpin turn, mm, yeah. hairpin turn, mm, hairpin turn, right? And and like, but they said the, the real danger is that somebody coming the other way will come around yes. a hairpin turn going 85 or 100 right. and, and slide and wipe you out. You're, you're going 25, doesn't matter. So, yeah. yeah. That was some yeah. road. The tail yeah, they tried to on that one. Yeah, see, I, I I got that out of my system when I was in my early twenties. When I would just I would drive in New England here, you know, back when we had snow. Right, and, I remember that. And and um and the vehicle that I had of choice was a uh, was a a 1974 Chevy Love pickup truck. Ooh. And I would just make sure that there was nothing in the back, and you would just go out on a snowy day when you knew there was nobody around, and, and you would I just would just dr- pretend, drift and I would everywhere. just be doing yeah, I would just do my call and pray, rally yeah. cross kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, so driving with my foot and just having all kinds of fun doing that stuff. Right. So that's that's yeah. that's how I survived that, and I also didn't get any tickets that way. Knock wood. Yeah, yeah. right. That's the way. Because if I had a Porsche, that would be the last car I ever owned. I would. So, Lorenz, <laughs> have you lived in New York City? Have you ever owned a car in your life? Oh, I grew up in L.A. Oh, okay. There you go. I was just thinking about the BMW I had in the late seventies. It was a rusted out two thousand two. Oh, that's oh, cool. Yeah, that's a but, that's a. That it Go was cartoon. so hot. It was. It, 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 it had these marvelous Italian radials on it. That's a hot <laughs> car. Yeah. That's oh yeah. Those those were a snappy ride. ride. Yeah. The two. The, the two double two. up electricals though. It, we'd like be flying down the it, highway five in California between Northern California and L.A. Um, you know, it, 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 there wasn't much, wasn't as much radar around and camera surveillance and stuff. Like any, you mean? Like a 110, yeah. you know, easily down this thing. And then the electrics had stopped. It yeah, like, Lucas, Lucas stopped. Electrical System, right? right. <laughs> it just, the engine would just quit, you know, and the, the lights would stay on, fortunately. So I'd like pull over, open the hood and like give it some kinetic therapy and yeah, it would right. work. I had a Jaguar. I had a Jaguar that did that. Like it would just stop once in a while. Just on the side of the road you open the hood you wiggle stuff around it would start again 
Why do the English <laughs> drink warm beer? They have Why? Lucas refrigerators. Lucas refrigerators. Exactly. We have a car today. We have a car, a, a 96 Saturn that uh, still gets 30 miles a gallon. So wow. we're not going to replace it. And we use it to get to Connecticut more than anything else. In New York City? You have a car in New York City? Wow. We do. We do. Yeah. We uh, have a, it, it parking's a pisser. I mean, the car's yeah. been paid for for 20 years, you know, but I know I've paid more for parking in the meantime than I ever paid for the car. Right, right, right. That. I know New Yorkers who live in the city, friends of mine, who never owned a car. Like, they don't know how to drive, and they've never owned a car, and they've never been off Manhattan Island except to go on a cruise mm -hmm. or something like that. Sure. I have an accomplishment. I drove around Times Square. Around Times Square. Wow. First COVID, there was no way downtown. <laughs> and you did, a, you did a circuit on Times Square? Yeah, there was just nobody down there. So, so it wasn't all the heavy traffic, yellow cabs and all that stuff. So listen, so I wanted to, was, was it like nobody was in New York? There was nothing on the yeah, street? Yeah, it was really dead out there, yeah. So I wanted to ride my motorcycle into the city. It was right during the first year of COVID. Yeah. And one of the motorcycle boards that I'm on said, don't do it because <laughs> they will pull you over. They're pulling every motorcycle over. They don't want people coming into the city and racing around on motorcycles. So that <laughs> they'll room, pull yeah. you over and they'll harass you and detain you and, you know, they'll make you miserable. So stay away. So I never <laughs> saw New York with no people on the streets. I, I wish I'd seen that. Yeah, we went to uh, Grand Central one time and there was like 10 people in the whole terminal. Wow. You know, they're standing around in the big central section. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There was just no way downtown. It was bizarre. What's like weird is that feels like movie. it was. It feels like it was ages ago. That feels like it was it ten was. years ago. Absolutely, mm -hmm. wasn't yeah. it? You're right. Back in the 1800s. Century. Right. <laughs> yeah, the 18, 1820 was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's really true. Yeah. It's really like true. What was it? What was that Charlton Heston movie, Omega Man? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Damn you! <laughs> Lorenz, are you going to play some theremin for us? I see the theremin hanging out in the background yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I, I was noodling around today with um, voices on my uh, this Korg, uh, you know, circa 85 thing, and um, the Peter Gunn theme. Right. Nice. And voices on the theremin. And I don't know all, enough of the Peter Gunn thing, but I'm going to run in and out of it. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I hear it. Wow, that's cool. great. That is really, nice. really, that is really, yeah, really cool. Uh, Flutter's asleep right now, but it really got you going. There you, you, you know what I just realized? I, I just realized that that I think Joe Cocker, um, like, he thought his mic stand was a theremin when he was singing. <laughs> so he was like, <laughs> <laughs> right? that's, what, that's his weird looking. Robert Plant a little bit, too. 
Yeah. Right, exactly. They think they think they they think like, oh, my mic is a theremin. Like somebody told them that on an LSD trip one day, and they're like, all right, that's how I do it now. <laughs> yeah. That's really great. Yeah, I want to come. I want to come. I'm, I'm I'm working on like theremin and this, you know, because this is very theremin like. So you've gone mainstream. Stuff that's I, I, I'm I'm still looking my my holy grail is something really portable to go with my open theremin, the little you know the battery op and and there's stuff out there. I just want to collect the right bits, you know, a good reverb, and uh, you know some little mini bit or something like the Korg uh, mini bits. I don't know. There you go. Call Sweetwater. Call J Jason at Sweetwater, and they will send you some candy. <laughs> Lovely. Jam TV not sponsored by Sweetwater. Right. You got to do it, man. My God. Well, they're, they're, they're doing cool. just fine. I was actually seeing something where Guitar Center right. might potentially be in a little bit of trouble these days. So I don't think Sweetwater is going to have that Guitar much. Guitar Center has been on the brink of failure for the last 20 years, you know? Yeah. Seems like it, yeah. Part of the reason is that it. people aren't buying guitars anymore. Like, you know, young people are buying other things than guitars now. And so, you know, they got to change their name to, like, you know, Groove Box Center. I don't, yeah, something like that. I don't know. Pretty crazy. I just bought a Tascam 12 track. It looks like something was made in the 1960s. It's like a Tascan mixing board with wood cheeks. Like, it, it's literally mm -hmm. got wood cheek mm -hmm. blocks. And, Vinyl uh, siding, too, or what? Jesus. But mm -hmm. it's got it. Right. But it's got mm -hmm. a... Uh, it's a 12 track recorder with a uh, with a, with a digital recorder in it, like 24 bit 48k digital recorder in it, but in a little tiny mixer thing. So I was having this big problem, neither here nor there, but I was having this big problem where I have the, too many of these weird things, and I, I need to use them at the same time, which means I need like old fashioned multi track mm -hmm. tape recording that can record it all while you're messing with, then you can edit it later. But uh, can't wait! I can't wait for it to come. It's coming Monday. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm. I was in the market for something like that as well. I'm, I was uh, actually. I actually just picked up something from Rockville, but I kind of panicked and, and decided to go back against it just because I've heard horror stories about the the longevity of that stuff. You know, I was well, hoping to find like a small mic. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say what's really interesting about gear nowadays. Um, I don't know if this is all gear, but certainly the gear that I deal with, like synthesizers and little modules and little you know like modular synthesizers. You'll buy something like I bought. I really, really, really wanted a thing called a Bit Ranger, which is this weirdo synthesizer box made in Czech Republic and whatever. And you know, you patch cables and the whole thing. And I couldn't. They stopped making them. They made like I don't know, five hundred of them. And the company doesn't care about making money. They just care about making these artistic boxes, and then they move on. They're like, oh, we're we're not going to make any more of those. We're just going to make other things now. And so what happened was the value of them started climbing, and they were at like 400. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of a toy. Like, do I really need it? 400. Uh, I'm like, yeah. Oh, look, I found one for 350 in Ireland, whatever. So the guy bought it for $200. And now it's 350, like a year later. Now they're worth $900. Oh, oh Jesus. Wouldn't, would, next stop, Clon Centaur. Jesus. Right. So what's happening is that, that, old stuff that you get, even stuff that they make, like this thing, I could probably sell this for more than I bought it for next week. If there's a, that's like, it's like real <laughs> estate. It like goes up because they, they don't make any more. Yeah. yeah. People want it. Oh yeah, no, abs absolutely. But just, you know I mean? Like the, just to, to circle this board, I looked at it and the power supply looked suspiciously like a cell phone charger. And I just, you know what I mean? And I'm just, this is something that I want to use for gigs. I want something that if the cord shits the bed, I can grab another mm -hmm. cord out of the bag. And yeah, you know, right, right, right. You know, just something like that. Or I'll send you the specs on this Tascam thing I got. It's, a, it's called a Model 12. And they make okay. a Model 16 and a Model 24. It's basically a Tascam mixing board from mm -hmm. the 60s, you know, with all the controls. Nice. You can mm -hmm. use this on a gig. Mm -hmm. It's got an aux send. It's got reverb on board. It just looks like a mixing board. But then it's got this module on the side that lets you do, like, what was $100,000 when I was learning, you know, with a Studer <laughs> Revox, you know, 24 track, you know, you know tape recorder. Um, it's got that built in, you know, like, oh, that's just uh, free. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's only, and the whole thing is only a few hundred dollars. So yeah, it's like, we have an app for that now. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Right. Speaking of apps, you forgot about your one that you were talking about a hundred years ago. The. Oh yeah. I've been using that. Thumb jam. 
Right. Nice. I still use my thumb jam all the time. Yeah. I use it to make noise. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't you know, call it music. I, yeah, but the apps are like three dollars, so you know they yeah. don't appreciate. You can't sell I, it to I, somebody. I make noise with this. <laughs> <laughs> One of them takes a lot more talent, and it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah. guys, you know that's sort of the end of Jam TV for tonight. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Hey, can yeah, I just plug fun. a couple of gigs real fast or not? Yeah, go. Plug. Everybody I'll, plug. I'll, I'm going to be playing tomorrow night at James Madison House over in, in Madison. Tuesday right. night, I'm actually going to be playing over at Two Roads with the Wabendos from like 6 to 8. And then St. Where's Patrick's Two Roads? Where's Two Roads? That's over in Stratford, actually. All right. Uh, yeah. So And then and then sat, Friday and Saturday night, I'm actually going to be doing sets over at uh, Stony Creek Brewing over in Brantford. Nice. So I got like four gigs coming up next week. What's the Wabendos like? Tell me about that band. Uh, the Wabendos is basically it's um, it's 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 a five piece group. We've got uh, three vocalists, drummer, and uh, or actually four vocalists and a drummer, and it, it just covers like a wide variety of classic rock kind of stuff, you know, eighties and nineties and through. So okay, what was your two roads gig again? Uh, the two roads, yeah, that's going to be Tuesday night the fourteenth over at two okay. roads, and then and then Friday and Saturday night I'll be doing an early show over at uh, Stony Creek in Brantford. If I'm in town and I think I'm going to engineer, be, I'll come to that gig at Two Roads. I'm going to definitely come into the Horseshoe on, on Monday night. Below. Yeah, no, I was planning on going to the Horseshoe Monday. Absolutely. I was I'll see you there. Yeah. All right, cool. I'll bring my little, the smallest organ in the, the world. <laughs> we'll do something together. I'll bring my, my little uh, Hammond organ. We'll, we'll, we'll do something together, Frank. Right. Wait, were you talking about going on the 27th as well or no? What's or that? that? I thought you were talking about going to the, to the Horseshoe on the 27th. Oh, oh wait. When is your show, uh, Bill Nolman? Monday. This Monday. Yeah, this Monday. What's on the 27th? I thought you were talking about going to the Horseshoe on the 27th. Okay, so if you're going to be at the Horseshoe on Monday, I will do my best to be there on Monday. I will, right. I will see you there. Yeah, that sounds good. It'll be fun, I think. <laughs> cool. And, and, and by the time Lorenz announces a Thera mini gig, I'm, I want on that gig. I want in. I'm pushing my way into that band. <laughs> we'll back you. Make room for you. I will be the Yoko. Can you imagine being the Yoko Ono of a theremin band? You know, like her voice totally fits. You know. Yes. Yes. That, that, bring that some uh, right synthesizers. In. You know. That's the move. I'll bring. We can work with it. You get a Yoko Ono tape and put it into your little doodad there. The little uh, you, you know what? I'm going on eBay tonight to buy a Yoko Ono tape. <laughs> something I've never said before. Things you never heard. Get a, get a cassette dub of her thing from Rock and Roll Circus when she sat in with uh, the Dirty Mac or whatever. That'd That's be the move. That's the move. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Great to see you all on GM TV. And we're going to do so. Bill yeah. Loman, I'm very, right. very. I'm very happy to tell you that we are going to be out of the 30s next week. We go, we do show 140 next week. Wow. Check wow. that out. The yeah. 30s seem like they went on forever. The 30s, wow. oh my, there's nothing longer than the 30s, you know. <laughs> Ask Cab Calloway. Oh my God. Last two weeks, so. <laughs> All right. Great to see you guys, JFTV. All right. Bye.